Hi, right, I've clicked on today's Tropical Tip for Thursday. We're talking again about the Atlantic hurricane season upcoming in two weeks now, closing in on June 1st. This is the Enzo model plume coming out of a strong and moderate La Nina, going into a neutral uh, according to the model mean over the summer, which I generally agree with, given that the PDO is still cold. Uh, looking at this cold horseshoe shaped ring of water east of North America with the warm water east of Japan. Still a cold signal, uh, which means it's going to be hard for this to fight into an El Nino quickly. It's probably more likely to stay neutral, possibly even seeing La Nina try to fight back later uh, next winter, but probably not going to be an insanely warm event, um, staying with the neutral balance for the season. Uh, NOAA just came out with their hurricane forecast today with their range of 12 to 18. It's a little bit too large for me. I'll pretty much hold them to forecasting 15 named storms, which is their midpoint. We'll probably just pretend that they forecasted that. So an above average season, that's in agreement with the number I've been tossing around to 14 to 15. I'm probably going to bump that up to 15 to 16, mainly based on the fact that the waters here have just continued to warm in the Atlantic and have gotten very impressively warm for a second year La Nina. I've talked before about the winter pattern over North America that allowed um, these waters here to retain more heat content than they typically do in a second year La Nina, and that's going to play a big factor this year. So I think the numbers will be closer to 2008s, uh, which is one of our analog years. Notice the cool area to the north of the warmth in the deep tropics, which is very similar to look to last year, um, and that's again because of this weird winter we've had. Um, in a typical second year La Nina winter, we have a lot of ridging in here. This is the climatological average, and you get a lot of cooling in the tropics. Pressure gradient in between increases the trade winds, which generally takes a lot of heat content out of the water here during the winter. But this winter was the exact opposite of that. We had a big negative NAO pattern, lots of lowering heights and cold over eastern North America that kept the trade winds low and allowed a lot more heat content to remain. And so we have a lot warmer water than we typically do in a year like this. Uh, now here, if we look at the uh, mean sea level pressure anomalies during the month of May in seasons that had 15 or more named storms, notice again the negative NAO look um, and lots of low pressure in the central Atlantic. This is one of the strongest indicators that you can have in May of whether the season is going to be active or not. And look at what May is looking like so far. We're not obviously through the whole month yet, but notice the big bomb of low pressure in the central Atlantic, generally low pressures across the tropics with high pressure to the north. Uh, if this continues throughout the month, that's a strong signal indicating we're going to have an above average season, uh, which I think we will, uh, definitely well above the average of 11 named storms uh, over the long term average of the last 60 years. Uh, this here is the analog package that I've talked about before, um, 2008 being weighted the most, as you can see down here, 500 millibar anomalies um, blocking southeast of Hudson Bay, uh, low pressure. Uh, low heights uh, centered along the southeast U.S. coastline, a typical pattern that likes to bring in storms that make landfall. All of these years down here had at least one major hurricane making landfall on the United States coastline. Um, or maybe not a major, I think 96 didn't have a major hurricane make landfall, but all of these had hurricanes, multiple ones making landfall. And uh, it's kind of a pattern that's uh, very um, concerning in that the United States tends to get hit a lot in this pattern, and it's concerning to see that in the analogs, and we'll be watching to see this kind of a pattern uh, shape up during the course of the season. And this is going to be the theme that you're going to hear me talking about, uh, that compared to last year, last year we had a lot of storms, hyperactive season, but everything we curved east of the United States. This year we're going to have less overall activity than last year, uh, but probably more impact is going to be possible in areas of the United States and the Caribbean. And uh, you can see here on some of these climate models, starting with the UK Met, this is the precipitation anomaly forecast for August, September, October, heart of the season. Notice all the wetness showing up in the deep tropics of the Caribbean off the southeast United States coastline, indicating lots of tropical activity close to home. European model showing the same thing. This is fresh off the May forecast. Notice all the wet showing up in here. Uh, really too close for comfort all around these land areas. And also notice it's a little bit dry out here, showing a perhaps less than active uh, Cape Verde season with more storms developing farther west as tropical waves come across, uh, perhaps developing more conducively in this region, which would again increase the landfall risk. Japanese model showing the same kind of thing. It's uh, showing the ITCZ very far south here uh, compared to normal with a little bit of dryness, uh, less active Cape Verde season, and then if we look closer to home, all that blue showing up above normal precipitation uh, right in the southwest Atlantic Basin in the heart of the land areas that could get threatened by storms developing close in and that's going to be a concern uh, for this year. 
um, it's interesting to note that already the precipitation anomalies for the last 30 days, notice the dry band showing up here with lots of above normal precipitation south of the equator, indicating the intertropical convergence zone being pressed a little bit farther south than it normally is for this time of year. If that pattern continues, it could verify what some of the global models are saying uh, that the warm Gulf of Guinea here will keep the Cape Verde season a notch below normal uh, or perhaps closer to normal than last year at least uh, over here in the eastern Atlantic which means that um, it'll keep the activity down again that's one of the reasons that we won't have as many storm numbers as last year uh, but the tropical waves that do come off may still develop farther west though or farther south which increases the threat to land areas uh, because they're less likely to recur before hitting someone this here is the CFS forecast for wind shear, blue indicating lower than normal wind shear. Over the deep tropics here, higher than normal shear occurs next to the coastline, um, but this should not be thought of as a shield that protects land areas from landfall. What matters during the season is the wind shear where tropical storms form. Uh, this shield is not like permanently there. Whenever a storm forms in here, lots of times they will come up and there will be a break that allows them to stay together before landfall. Um, it's a gen typical pattern. In fact, seeing this here is generally an indicator of more danger than less danger. So what's down here is what matters the most. Here's the CFS forecast for sea surface temperature anomalies. Notice all the warmth uh, that's in this area of the world here. And then watch what happens when we go to the next three-month period. Notice how much things cool down in this whole area. A lot cooler uh, with no real explanation for it based on the pattern in the CFS forecast for North America, which you could um, perhaps draw from this that it's, sh it's seeing a lot of tropical activity that's trying to cool a lot of the water in here, and that wouldn't be too far of, far out of a guess that it's seeing a lot of precipitation, a lot of cloud cover that decreases the sea surface temperatures as tropical storms roll through during the heart of the season. Oops. And here's some of the analog years um, in the package that we've been talking about. Uh, this is 1955. Notice the cluster of storms that have hit North Carolina. A lot of these years had a lot of storms hitting the United States. Um, 1989, of course, had Hugo coming in. A couple of hurricanes hit Texas. Um, 1996 had several hurricanes hit North Carolina um, and up the eastern seaboard. And uh, 1999, again, had a cluster of storms uh, near North Carolina. I had 2008 up here, I'm not sure where it went, but we all know that uh, 2008 was a more Gulf-weighted year, lots of activity hitting the United States and coming west. It was a very um, inactive year, Cape Verde-wise, in 2008, with a lot of storms developing in this region then coming northwestward, which is interesting because that's um, some, of the, some of what the models are saying for this year, which is similar, and of course 2008 is the most similar in terms of current conditions, so it'll be interesting to see how similar we get to that. So overall, the message here is that less activity than last year, uh, but more chances for landfall impact in the land areas of the southwest Atlantic. Um, so people need to be more prepared. Hopefully, people are going through their annual preparations as thoroughly as ever, despite some of the recent inactivity um, in that 2009 2010 have given us a breather. And uh, we can always hope for that continuing, but currently the pattern indicates that we're going to have more of a threat to land areas this season. Uh, so. Um, people definitely need to be ready for that. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.